tears. Station, and they actually lost their funding, so it was just a journey from there. <laughs> I always wanted to do like a radio show, this because I talk a lot. So yeah, <laughs> well, that's always the best person to do it. You can't shut up. <laughs> I got cat hair, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. Say, so at least you got a hair. So on Tuesday it'll be on iTunes and SoundCloud. Nice. We're gonna replay on there. And it's time to record. I listen to some stuff on SoundCloud, like podcasts and stuff like that. So. Oh, wait out. a minute. Yeah, we're going in, huh? All right. I'll see when we bring you in after this break. Understood. That's the host. Plenty interviews. Hot topics. You know how it goes. If you miss it, check that podcast. They gon' get it popping. I'm talking special guests and plenty good gossip. So get considered. This a big. Conversation, I know that you're gonna like it. It'll get you so excited. You know everyone's invited. If you wanna be a star, listen to the best. Get considered this. Don't settle for nothing less. Hey, consider this radio hosted by Misunderstood. Let's go. children are killed by guns. If you have a gun, lock it up. If you don't have a gun, make sure your kid doesn't have one either. Take a stand. 
stop the violence. Hi, this is Angela Gale from Black T-Shirt Campaign, and you're tuned in to Consider This. Sunday, good people. I am your girl, Misunderstood. And I am Cuddy Webster, the comedian extraordinaire. Yes, and you are tuned in to Consider This Radio only on WEBR Radio Fairfax. I hope you guys are enjoying your Sunday. How is your Sunday going so far? Well, mine, first of all, let me start off by saying this. Um, I was leaving out of my house to, um, you know, come to the radio show, and I went out the door, tried to open the door, and my my goddamn doorknob comes off, so now I'm stuck in my house. So I had to call my neighbor that lives in another building, so I had to throw my keys out of the window so he could get in the building so he could come let me out. So now I got to go get a doorknob. So my door, my top lock is locked, but, you know, it's just been stressful morning already. But I'm here. I made it. It sure is, because he was <laughs> late coming out the house, which stressed me out. <laughs> So, <laughs> outside of that, how was your week last week? Oh, man, my week was pretty good, man. I mean, busy, busy with work. Um, I had a confrontation at work, man, with a co-worker. Um, you know, but other than that, my week was pretty good. I mean, I, I, I do, I feel like I do a confrontation pretty well, you know. But in my mind, you know, I wanted to, you know, I had to suppress some anger you know some people say i need to go to anger management maybe i do because I, I was i was really upset but i, I made I, I made through it you know so yeah you probably i know. didn't go to jail so that was good well then that's the first <laughs> and step. i didn't lose my job that's the first step not going to jail and not losing your job if you can do those two things you may not need anger management no i need anger management oh, okay yeah so you need to work on that yeah because i you know when i get frustrated and I'm trying to talk and i'm I don't. I don't think that I'm an angry person. I think I'm very passionate about, you know, what I'm saying my beliefs. So, and you know, what I'm saying I kind of, when somebody doesn't, when somebody is putting me in a box that I know I don't belong in, then I I, I get kind of defensive about it. So, you know. I think I need ignore management class. Because I'm very good at ignoring people, and that pisses people off. Yeah, you are. And I it think it's, me off it's you better me. for me to <laughs> ignore you than to argue with you. I just rather you just to shut down and just don't talk. Yeah. I don't have a class like that. Ignore I think management. you know what though. Your ignore. If I could, if if I could adapt or or adopt your ignore game, and you can uh, adopt my. Uh, nah, you shouldn't do that. That's not good. But I I need to take your ignore. I need to learn from you, your ignore game, because you are good at that. I'm amazing at that. Yeah, amazing. I'm going to start putting that, like, on my top <laughs> talent list, is ignoring people. Yeah. I think it's a gift. I'm quite sure God gave it to me, and he was like, here you go. Yeah. You have the gift to ignore. Yeah, It's beautiful. Because I do friends? have a gift to agitate. You like, do. You have a very good gift to agitate. Yeah. And to not listen. We got guests, man. We can't be... Yeah. Well, we have to let them know who you are. Oh, yeah, yeah, we do. We do, we do, we do. But, they, you know, come on. Let's so, go. are you excited for the boxing event on Saturday? Yes, I'm very excited. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not a big boxing fan, but I do enjoy the sport. You know, I I, I don't, you know, I'm not up on, on the belts, and I know the weight classes and stuff like that, but I don't, I don't, I'm not a boxing fanatic, but I do enjoy the sport, though. So, I'm, I'm, look, look, I'm looking forward to going. Yeah, I think it's going to be fun. Boxing can be very long, though. Because it'd be like a thousand people on a card before yeah. you get to the good person. Right. So hopefully it's not all day. Yeah. <laughs> we have a total body wellness shop um, this Saturday as well. You guys need to come out. We have someone doing wound care. We have a life coach. We have a financial coach. And someone that can probably help you with stress management through painting. A lot mm. of people didn't know that painting is another form of alleviating stress. It helps people calm down. Like children that are art artistic, as you normally see them they do a lot with their hands whether they're building things they paint they color they do different things like that to calm them 
So the event is free this Saturday. You can check out my website at K-O-N-S-I-V-E-R-D-I-S. It is a free event. We will have breakfast. And you should come before the boxing. It should be fun. Give everybody your social media information. Oh, you can follow me at Cuddy Webster on Instagram and Cuddy Webster on Facebook. We do have an amazing group in here today. Y'all are going to learn something about some alternative energy today. So I hope you guys are ready. If you're interested in a career change, if you want to know if you can actually afford to go green, all of those things are coming up next. We have grid alternatives in the building. Go ahead and log on to the website now so you can get acclimated. The number here is 703-560-8255. Again, that number is 703-560-8255. If you want to call in and ask questions, call in. Like, they're going to be joining in on the hot topics and everything. So it's going to be fun. Right after this, um, we're going to get into it. Rest in peace to Mac Miller. Let me pause the music real quick. Um, I always speak about mental health often. So we got to figure out, I don't have the answer. I wish I did have the answer, like to just make people feel better. My answer is Kit Kat bars and Snickers. When I get upset, other people want to do K2, Scooby, Lean, Hair On. I don't know. If everybody just ate chocolate, I just think we will be better off. Unfortunately, he did lose his life. The autopsy has not came out yet. Of course, there's rumors circulating about it being a drug overdose. And I just really feel sorry for his family. His grandma spoke out to the community that came out to his vigil, which I thought was really, really dope. One of his songs that I love the most is called Self Care. I wish he could have kind of took his own advice in this one, but you know, his music will live on forever. His record sales went up, so that's good that he's able to take care of his family in that way. And please try to seek some help again. If you don't want to go to therapy, Get a paintbrush, get a coloring book, find a way for you to deal with your stress so you, that you don't have to actually lose your life. All right, guys? Yeah. So rest in peace to Mac Miller. We'll be back right after this with Grid Alternatives. I got my glasses on today. I'm not used to wearing glasses, but I'm waiting for my prescription of contact lenses to come in through Hubble. Shout out to Hubble. <laughs> so y'all get your glasses jokes all out right now. You know what I'm saying? I look like Steve Urkel, whatever you want to say. I'm giving you an opportunity to, you know what I'm saying, get your glasses jokes out and all that now. Oh, yeah, I'm blind. So. What's up? What's up, Amber? What's up, Joe? What's up, yo? Got my glasses on today. Yeah, your boy is blind. So go, y'all get y'all jokes out. What up, Jibba? I want to consider this radio. Y'all call in, tune in, like, share. Yeah, that is true. That's, that's very true, yeah. That's very, very true. I guess there's other songs that just heard. Yeah, I think this is um, off the... Y'all stay tuned, listen to the show, man. What's up, Percy? I think this is this, the one that's from this year. So Y'all listen to the show and call it 703-560-8255. I almost didn't make it to the radio station this morning. <laughs> I, I, uh, I went to leave out my house, and I pulled the doorknob, and it came off. So I had to call somebody. I had to throw my keys out my window so somebody could come let me in. 
get in the building and let me and, and let me out. Seven zero three five six zero eighty two fifty five. Man, y'all call in, man. Listen to the show, man. We got some guests in the building. You know what I'm saying? We got a great topic we're gonna talk about, man. So y'all call in, man. Y'all call in to say what's up to Cuddy. I got a show coming up October the 13th at DC Productions in Rockville, Maryland. And October the 20th, I will be in DC, Northeast DC, with my Epic Boy Epic. A spot called On the Rocks on 8th Street. Flyer. I will be making the flyer today and I will be putting it out there. We'll be making the flyer today. I don't want to put the phone up too close. I, I'm kind of self, self-conscious about my classes. I'm, maybe I could do the show without them. But then I, got, I can't see my co-host when she's trying to talk to me. And I'll be squinting like this the whole, the whole goddamn show. Now, what's, what y'all what's think? Dominic. Dominic. Jackie, Jackie. I love a Jackie, so I'm never gonna forget you. <laughs> What's up, stuff? What up, huh? Hey, Aaron. Y'all listen up and see what we talking about, man. <laughs> you know what I like about him is that And you're now tuned in with Consider This. High blood pressure, also known as hypertension, affects 1 in 10 Kansas City people of every you know, age, man. race, and gender. The symptoms are often there? ignored. Headache, dizziness, nausea, anxiety. Up, Although high blood pressure project. is easily treatable, left unchecked can lead to life-threatening conditions. Get your blood pressure Listen checked show, regularly. Up. Eat healthier foods, don't smoke, and stay physically active. Don't let a silent killer go unchecked. Truman Medical Centers and the Kansas City Chiefs. Partners for a healthy community. Hey, 
Sunday, guys. We are back. Happy, happy, happy Sunday. Oh, yeah. Shout out to my family in North Carolina. They lost electricity. The town is so small. I hope they get it back one day because it's just a really, really, really small place. So I don't even know how likely it is that they'll uh, get some electricity sooner than later. But shouts out to everybody in North Carolina. Anyone that family is experiencing any... Um, pushback from the weather. Yeah, I, I second that. I got a lot of family and loved ones in Charlotte, North Carolina. So North Carolina, man, you know, I'll stay prayed up and, and hope y'all, all those who are affected by the storm, man, y'all get it together. Come together. All right, right now we have a very, two special guests representing one movement, okay? And that movement is alternative energy. I had to pull up the definition because I got my own definition. So, for those of you that are not sure what alternative energy is, it's something that we need to be doing. It's something that communities around the world actually do already. Um, you have a lot of people in California that live off the grid, they say, and Pennsylvania does it too. And I think there's a couple of other. Arizona has like a community of people that live off the grid. So basically, alternative energy is an energy source that is an alternative to fossil fuels. So you see now how you have my favorite car of the world, Tesla, or the Fisker, or Toyota. What is that? The Prius is almost like an alternative uh, energy type of car. Plus, there's a tax right off, so y'all need to get with it. It's probably going to be my next car. <laughs> But right now we have Dominique and Jackie here from Grid Alternatives. How are you guys doing? Great. Good. Good to Thanks be here. for having us. Good. I'm glad y'all responded. I, I don't remember the gentleman's name that I met, but I met him like in an Uber. Mm -hmm. And we started talking and I was like, y'all need to come on the show. And then Kristen hit me up and I was like, that's dope because <laughs> most people, especially my listeners, you know, may not be as familiar to what alternative energy is, how accessible it is and how easy it is to convert over to it. So why don't you let everybody know about your company? Yeah, so we're Grid Alternatives. We're a nonprofit solar installer. Um, we provide solar panels at no cost to income qualified residents. Um, currently, we're working exclusively in DC, because uh, that's where we have funding. Um, but we are actively working to create funding sources in Maryland and Virginia so that we can expand, hopefully, very soon. Um, the solar systems that we install uh, help to cut down your electricity bill. Um, on average, our clients see about a 50% reduction or wow. about $500 a year of savings. Mm -hmm. Everyone that I know has solar panels always talk about how low their electric bills are after the panels have been put up. Dominique, how would you describe alternative energy to you? Like, What would be your definition if would, you could do your own? If I could do my own definition, <laughs> I would say just like super super clean energy like uh, we don't want to pollute our planet our planet had like enough and it's like our turn to step in and provide like some clean energy and just keep everything nice and clean so mm -hmm. I wouldn't uh, like particularly claim it like to be super super dirty energy it's a super clean energy like get away from fossil fuels just step away from as far as possible because we need to change this planet and we can't we got to stop talking about it and we got to do like more action and actually mm -hmm. do You're right. so, mm -hmm. absolutely. And that's one thing that I like to bring um, to the community, mm -hmm. especially to try to get... I live in an apartment, so I'm not clean living just of yet, okay? But I just think that when I do my events, I try to do some form of alternative to the norm. So we go to the farm, and we'll have a back-to-school jam, or we, we planted our own pumpkins and things like that, because mm -hmm. I think it's important to get back to the resource and to introduce people. And one thing that I say, and it always makes me tear up on the inside, is because every time the families come to the farm, they always play. Like in the videos, you'll see the parents with the kids jumping rope or picking vegetables or whatever it is. And I think for the most part, people are not introduced to it. And to me, that's why people don't do it. Because it's like you don't know. Why do you think um, alternative energy is important? I know you said that we got to get away from the fossil fuels, but outside of that, what else do you think? Yeah. Um, so as we, uh, as you all may know, climate change is a huge issue that we're mm -hmm. facing right now. Um, it's causing every year on record to be warmer than the year before. So in the, you know, the last ten years, we've had some of the hottest years since we've started keeping track of our temperatures. Um, it causes more extreme weather events like Florence mm -hmm. um, that's coming through right now. 
Um, and so switching to fossil or switching away from fossil fuels to renewable energy will help cut down the impacts of climate change. Mm -hmm. When we burn fossil fuels, we're releasing greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, which trap heat, causing the climate to be warmer and these extreme weather events to be more common and more extreme. Um, so things like solar panels or wind energy um, are two examples of renewable energy pull from the natural resources. They don't take anything away from the earth. Mm -hmm. so they're constantly renewing and they don't pollute and give anything back that's negative. Mm -hmm. um, it's also a way to take back power as an individual. So we're putting solar panels on people's homes, allowing them to create energy locally. So they don't have to rely as much on um, you know, other systems at play. They have sovereignty to create their own power, um, mm -hmm. which I think is exciting. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree. I think um, other smaller ways too, if you are in apartments, if you can change your light bulbs, like my light bulb in the kitchen is some special stupid light bulb, right? But in my room, I've been in my apartment now for two years and I've had the same light bulb because I got one of the, it was like $20 LED up front. LED light yeah, light. it's like an LED light, but it's lasted me two years. I have never changed my light bulb in my room or my daughter's room because we both, those are the only two rooms where I can actually control it. Mm -hmm. um, and I really, really, really like that. Yeah, wherever you can put energy efficiency into place as well will help you both cut down your electric bill and because you're not using as much energy, you're not using as many fossil fuels either. So making sure you turn off your lights if you're not in the room or your TV if you're not there, um, even unplugging things from the walls. Mm -hmm. um, just your TV being plugged in all day actually takes energy, um, they call it like vampire loads, it takes energy from the grid. So it's using energy even though you're not using your TV. Um, so small ways like that will help you cut down as well. And trash. Yeah. So I want to yeah. shout out to Mike Ewell from the Environmental Justice Group. Um, but he introduced me to that because I didn't even know that. Like, they were at a concert at the Howard Theater. So I love his, um, <laughs> love the way he networks because it was just the most <laughs> random place to have an energy group there. And that's how him and I met. And um, he just explained that particular day how trash also causes a problem. Kingman Island mm -hmm. is a place over in Ward 7 that was affected because the Pepco plant exploded. And they didn't tell the community that the, wow. that it exploded, but they have the highest rate in D.C. of asthma and COPD in the whole Washington, D.C. And I think we have almost 700,000 people now. So after my meeting with him, I started doing, like, just cleaning up the parks. Mm -hmm. I fell off this year. I didn't do it the way I wanted to do it. But um, for about three, four years, I was really consistent with just going to the park every month and just picking up trash because those are one of the places where, you know, you eat candy, you just throw it away. But what people fail to realize is once that sun, and as you said, we had the hottest 10 years recently, yes. hits on that plastic, you're breathing that in. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's not good for you. Yeah. And I, I had a bad habit with that. And, I, you know, I, recently, the last couple of years, I stopped doing it, like throwing trash in the street and, like, even... Every so often, I might throw something, but then it'll uh, it'll register, and I'll pick it up, and you know, find the trash can and throw it in. But that's a that's a big um, thing in DC is with the trash and and um, it's, it's yeah. Yeah, and I do encourage people to like find out things they can recycle too, because we have a lot of trash. Some some of that stuff we can like reuse and just throw it in the recycling instead of just trashing it and then. And I will say that's one thing that DGS did really good because if it's one trash can, it's generally a recyclable trash mm -hmm. can out in the city. It's just the point of view using it. Yeah. Um, I think it's a commercial that was out recently in regards to it, Pampers, um, like regular plastic Pampers, damn the, the um, oh my God, what is, I'm going to look the commercial up so I can be accurate on it, but it's something about Pampers that's the mm -hmm. issue. So you all have some of the midwives that give out cloth Pampers now, and I think Pampers have a line of cloth Pampers because of the plastic from the um, Pampers is a problem too when, when you're thinking of energy. So one thing that people may not know um, about you guys is you also offer job training. So we'll talk about that when we come back. So if you guys are looking uh, to switch careers, this will be around forever. I mean, energy is just going up, especially with engineering. Those are the two things that's supposed to skyrocket. So all of you youngins, pay attention. If you don't know what you want to do with yourself, this may be it. Maybe you want to, you know, go around and take back your community. That's what I always say. We got to hold ourselves accountable <laughs> for what it is that you're doing. We will be talking about job training 
opportunities and some of their partnerships when we come back. The number here is 703-560-8255. Again, that number is 703-560-8255, and we will be right back. Call in. Somebody was supposed to say something about my glasses. I'm waiting on my contact lenses, so I was forced to wear these today. But you know what I'm saying? Call in, man. I got you, Corey. I got you. 703-560-8255, man. Y'all call in and say something, man. Or if you want to comment on what's being talked about, do that as well, man. We would love to hear you at your uh, um, comments and opinions. And then we should have... I'm learning today. Have two things. Two people just uh, sipping their alcohol and spraying. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's probably raising your cholesterol. <laughs> <laughs> what Johnny Boys is. You keep posting all that food, you know. I see you. Coming, Corey, yeah. Joy star. Keep them coming. Stretch marks on my heart. Oh, oh, oh. I knew somebody. I, I, I knew somebody. It's because of you. The, the, the one time you tune into the show, yes, you catch me slipping out of bounds. So go ahead. Get your, this is your shine. This is your moment, Corey. Fire me up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> respect, man, respect. I'll make sure y'all come to the show in October, man. October 13th, Rockville, Maryland. October 20th, Northeast DC on the rocks. Shout out to Epic, man. Shout out to Epic. Great parenting, Mom. Why don't you pull your cut out of your ass and feed me some freaking bananas? Giving this kid an order of fries is like giving him a pack of cigarettes. You have to make all the decisions for him. Child plus burgers equals... This is for person. If you take care of me now, you'll teach me to take care of Hey, that was a good one, Joe. I like that. I cry about it, but I don't want to get bacon grease everywhere. Hey, this is Sasha, and you're tuned in to Consider This. <laughs> oh, man, Joe, that was funny, man. I'm still laughing on that, man. <laughs> Shout out to the next show, man. Y'all subscribe to the next show, man. guys we are back thank you for tuning in to consider this radio hopefully so far you guys have un got a 
small understanding of what alternative energy is and got a feel for great alternatives that are right here in the DC or slash DMV area. Right now, we're going to talk about some of their training programs, but one fun fact that's on their website, gridalternatives.org, is more than 3 million U.S. workers are employed in a well-playing, clean energy job. Our installation training programs help individuals launch careers in this booming industry. So, Dominique just shared that he actually went through the program. So, you are the king of this, right? <laughs> so, yeah, I started in the program. It was just like the testing thing. Uh, back in, I want to say, 2016, I was a part of the Marion Berry Summer Program in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And then that program was just six weeks. So we just had six weeks. It was new. Like, we thought we were going to be, like, outside, like, helping people cut the grass, stuff like that. But Grid did something different, and the program did something different, and we actually got to install solar. So I was like, hey, let's do it. Uh, I'm down. Um, got up on the roof, and then it was easy. So I, like, fell in love with it. It was hands-on training. So, like... I didn't really work with the power tool before that, and they showed me how to do everything. So they really taught me from like, if I had any questions, they answered it for me. And it was just a really nice program. And then we was like, we can do this afterwards. Like it's a real good program. We should just make this a repetitive thing. So uh -huh. they made like a SolarWorks DC program, which is 12 weeks. So I came from six weeks, and then this program is 12 weeks, so you get to learn more. So um, I actually had like, Two solar core come from the program. They actually get hired with us afterwards, so it's a really nice cycle that we're doing. Uh, the program is 12 weeks. It offers like first aid and CPR. So if people uh, wanting to get uh, trained in first aid, they can come and get that. Uh, OSHA 10 is like a safety recognized uh, certificate. Um, we actually have a NAPSAP test, which is really recognized across the United States. Um, it stands for North American Board of Certified Energy Practitioners. Um, look it up. It's a really nice thing to have on your uh, resume. Um, I tell people all the time, like, the sun isn't going nowhere. So, mm -hmm. like, as uh, long as we got the sun, that mm -hmm. means we can get solar. So, I really want people to sign up for this or look it up. Look it up. Um, if you want more information, look up SolarWorksDC at GridAlternatives.org. And then you can just send me an email. I respond to it because I really want people in this because I came through it. I know it works, and it's really good for people. And now he's one of our trainers in our program. Oh, yes. that's wow. cool. Yes. That's really, really cool. And it says that they have two to three days of weekly construction. Mm -hmm. You guys do the outreach workforce, one or two days of actually installing. Mm -hmm. And is it, so this training wage, is that a part of the training class? Yes, it's paid training. You oh, get yeah. paid to learn. Like, yeah. How can you beat that? Yeah. Um, when I did, I was in the sub program. It was just like you get paid to learn how to install a solar array. And it's a job. It's it's a job that makes a career. So right. that's mm -hmm. why I loved it. Um, we actually had a, a trainee who was in the program. He uh, he got hired with us, and now his dad's in the program. That's wow. how good it is. So it's wow. nice to have like a family type of atmosphere in there. Um, I encourage everybody to do it. The only requirements is you just gotta live in D.C. and you can join the program. So I really want people to like uh, share the word and get into it. And the trainer is in D.C. They do the training in D.C. Okay. And it looks like now it says that it's from oh September 11th. Can people still sign up? Uh, you can sign up now, but uh, the cohort started. This is the second week coming this Tuesday. Oh, okay. They can sign up, but they can just be added to the wait list. But I really want to encourage people to join the next one. We mm -hmm. do three different cohorts. We do like a summer one, a spring one, and a fall one. Okay. So we're doing the fall now. It ends December 7th. And then, so if they wanted to, I would say in January, definitely look out for it because it will be uh, posted on our website. And then really try to get involved into it because okay. it's a nice program. Okay. That's good. And the website is gridalternatives.org. They have so much more here that you'll be able to check out in regards to it. Um, like you said, it's a 12-week course, and it's paid training. So who can't beat that? Yeah, man, I might try to get into that myself. <laughs> really, honestly. It's great. And there's yeah. job placement um, services at the end, too. So we do work with the trainees to help make sure that they get a job afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, we don't just drop you at the end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and a couple of good benefits about it is it has hands-on training, as Dominique said. You have um, access to potential employment opportunities because they do have job partners that is also listed on the website. You get your skills certificates award, and you're demonstrating competence on real-world installations, opportunities to gain leadership. Um, it's also a priority participant slot on most um, installations, and it's access to training-only events and workshops, which is also good. So you guys definitely should want to check that out ASAP. And the website, again, is gridalternatives.org 
So go ahead and search it out. Like yeah, get your Captain Planet on, man. You know, <laughs> you know, don't just recycle. Just you know, get into solar and uh, and everything green. You know. There's an introduction in the course to all of the work that we do. So I'm on our outreach team and we take the trainees canvassing so they get to see what it looks like on our side to get homeowners to participate in the program. Um, and they work with communications to see how we pitch solar to right. different audiences. And then they also have a almost weekly install. So they do get to see how each department works and get a full circle of what working at Grand Alternatives is like. I have a question if you have the answer. Why do you think apartment complexes are not as um, anxious to sign up with it? Is, do you think it's because they don't pay the electricity anyway? Because we do. <laughs> <laughs> so it depends on the apartment. We have to work with the building owner, which uh -huh. is what makes it more difficult. Uh -huh. um, we do have a couple of multifamily projects where we have worked um, with apartment owners, but generally they have to pay. Uh -huh. um, so. Um, it's just a, a longer contract and process, um, mm -hmm. but they can work with our multifamily team if they're interested and if they work with uh, or have low-income residents, then they would qualify likely for our program. Mm -hmm. um, but it, in terms of for-profit, if they're working you know, outside of us, then you do have to pay for it. So mm -hmm. it's just uh, keeping into account their costs generally. I really yeah. think that should be um, mandatory for uh, low-income families to have that option. Yeah. I mean, it helps cut down on the building's electricity bill, so the common spaces that they pay for as well, and it just is a benefit to right. the community. It's yeah. also rewarding too, because I remember back when I was when I first started, I was in the six week program. Um, my first install, the homeowner was like his bill was really high. He was paying about like seventy five a month for his bill, which is probably low to some people, but to him it was extremely high. Um, my very first install, I was learning on the roof with them and they told me how to install solar, and then I got hired with Grid afterwards, and then we just did like a service call just to check up on them about a year later, and I was like, yeah, how's everything going? I did my first install here, he remembered me, and he was like, I'm doing really good. He was like, one week I owed uh, Pep four dollars, the next week they owed me a dollar, so mm -hmm. it's just like, that is just really rewarding knowing that we cut this bill down, and mm -hmm. I learned on this roof, so like, it's really hands-on, like, you don't need any type of experience or nothing like that, you don't need to know the name of anything, all that will be taught to you, so I, I just cannot stress enough. But I really encourage people to join this because this is where I started from. Because I didn't, I didn't have like a good career path. I was thinking I didn't know what I wanted to do, and then I just got introduced to this, and it's now my career. Mm -hmm. We can actually. Do you think it's something like we could campaign to do, like you know, for um, I guess for apartment buildings um, to start doing that, like try to have you know put together like a campaign and have people come out and support and sign petitions and try to pass that so low income families it's really does have that option it's not just talking about it but really trying to put it into action what do you think yeah but the city has to get on board with it too that's going to be the biggest thing that's what i'm saying we could, we could do it like you know so I, I make some noise so the city can look at it and just say you know what this is a big issue you know and this could really help out low-income families that they have that option to do that yeah, a large part of our funding um, comes from the solar for all program that DC has um, so DC put out a goal of installing a hundred thousand low-income solar systems or hundred thousand solar systems on low-income homes by 2032 mm -hmm. um, which created the solar for all funding so they had to put money behind that goal mm -hmm. and that's where we have both our big multi-family project of Parkway Overlook as well as our whole solar works DC, both the job training and the homeowner installs mm -hmm. all comes from that funding. So, um, you know, if Maryland and Virginia were able to put out a goal and put funding towards it in a similar way, then we could most definitely get both, you know, homeowners and single family homes as well as multifamily apartments to mm -hmm. receive solar. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think it's important too, not even just for like low income family, but just period, because if you live by yourself, it's expensive. My rent is $1,400. I have to pay that by myself. So if I could get a break on some energy, I would love to get a dollar back from Pepco on an energy <laughs> bill, whether I would be financially considered low income or not. Like, sometimes you just be, you want those breaks when you have to pay your bills by yourself. Like, it, D.C. is expensive, so there's no way to get around it, you know. Yeah, and it's always hard, you know, we have 
very specific income cutoffs, and mm -hmm. we have run into folks who are forty dollars over our income cutoff. That doesn't make you wealthy, right? Right? Like, what what is that arbitrary cutoff? But we can't work with them because mm -hmm. of that. So those are definitely hard things, and there should be programs being implemented to fill those gaps mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, it's it's um. Those income requirements are very interesting, but it works for those that need it, especially like our seniors, because they don't get any benefits. So um, that's really good for like an elderly person that's living by themselves and you know having to pay their own bills and working off a disability or someone that's disabled and getting SSDI. It's always a great opportunity for them too. So um, we def y'all definitely need to figure it out. Like this is a great career opportunity. It's paid training, um, and I think too. People from the community should be doing it because I think the community would be more open to it, when, especially when it comes down to the canvassing because I'm sure you guys experience your own experiences with that. But I think like if people from the community were actually doing it and were the ones that was canvassing it, you would probably have a lot more people doing it because the community can be hesitant sometimes. Some, sometimes people just think you have an alternative, um, like an alternative goal, and that may not be true. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you may be the only one that will <coughs> participate. I think the police should be the same way. Like, I think people from the community should be police. Yeah. Like, but the relationship with them don't don't work out as well as as it should. But it'd be easier that way because yeah. the people know you and they're familiar with you. As Dom said, <clears throat> excuse me, one of our um, recent homeowners, his son went through our job training program mm. and so that's exactly right when some folks get involved they can spread it to their community mm -hmm. and it helps build trust mm -hmm. um, with everyone else about you know what is this equipment what is this foreign technology mm -hmm. um, just helps introduce people to it so they trust it more right and then when you come from the culture you're able to switch up the dialect too right mm -hmm. because you know it can be so wordy sometimes and you may not understand all of the verbiage but if you come from the community you're able to speak to the community in layman's terms about what this is for and why you think it's a, go, a, a great idea and not to mention that you can go around the world with this this is not something you just have yes. to do in dc they have um who is it french montana just started a school or something and i think his school is completely um alternative energy like they're doing and a lot of third world countries truth be told have been living off of clean energy because they have no choice <laughs> in regards to their resources. But mm -hmm. I think him and Akon have like a clean alternative school. They only use like solar panels. Um, they pump their own water from the rainwater. Like it's a complete off the grid type of thing. And I think it's really, really good. Well, you guys have definitely sparked uh, an interest in this topic for me because like I didn't know about the alternative energy and it's like now I'm intrigued and I want to get involved. and whatever I can do because I, I you know I want to start doing things to rebuild DC and you know not not just DC but I'm trying to change the world one person at a time you know with whatever I can do um, and I definitely going to get some information from you guys and maybe try to see how we can um, get the city to recognize this as an option yeah. It's a real gotcha because I remember we had um, I had a trainee from Ecuador he moved from Ecuador he wanted to learn about solar uh, he lived in D.C. for a couple years, and then he joined the training program. And then he kind of thought it, it was out of reach for him because it was just like, uh, just solar, like it seems like a pretty big established thing. I was like, no, just come pay attention to the training program. Uh, he took like everything out of it. He took a bunch of notes, and then now he's like one of the supervisors in mm -hmm. the company. So like he's, mm -hmm. he came from Ecuador. So And then we have people that's from D.C. that like, they're, they're like doing good now. They're established. So I really just want to stress the fact that Come in with an open mind, and you can learn a lot and grow with it. Like I'm an instructor now from a six week program. Like, who would have thought that would happen? I didn't see this in my future. I didn't even know about solar when I first started. Like, you would have asked me what solar was. I just would have like, is that a video game? But I really like researched it, <laughs> and like I like just dig deep and really researched it. And now I'm an instructor, and I'm teaching people. I'm so you do this full time. Do this full time. Right. Okay, and I cool. think that speaks volumes about the company too. Um, because I've been on my contract and I'm not a supervisor or nothing. I did get a promotion, but I'm not a supervisor, okay, which I should be. But that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> but that just speaks volumes that, again, from you not having um, the actual background and, to, and they trust you that much and you're young, you know what I'm saying? That's dope. Like, it's amazing. 
So shout out to Grid Alternative for thinking outside of the box. And shout out to um, LeBron James, too. One good thing about his school, uh, and that's one thing. Let me pause the music again because some people just don't get it. So when you're giving back, it's not that serious, right? We all think that you have to have a million dollars to do something, and that that is so far from the truth, okay? Because I'm definitely not a millionaire. But you have to figure out what you're good at and work off of that and how can that impact the community right so you, everyone knows by now lebron james has a brand new school that he opens up i think it's in ohio yeah. but his school he offers free he gave all of the children free bikes to ride the bikes to school and if you're within a two mile radius they offer transportation for you to come to school so those are two small things and you know he has the money but those are two small things that he's doing to make a difference. Okay, now, you know, the kids may want to ride the bikes even more than getting on a school bus, which we know the emissions from the bus mm-hmm. and all the smoke from the bus sucks. And then if you have transportation where you're picking up more than one person, that's even better for that two-mile radius. So it's small things like that that everyone could do to make things better. Like instead of emphasizing so much on the government and all of this all this nonsense, do what you can do. Right. And think, if right. you play your part, we don't need the government to do because everyone has a talent. We all are talented in something. And I just think we all need to play our part in order for the larger scheme of things and stop blame and gain on the government and everybody else when you're not doing what you what you could do and something that small. Right. I think one of the, uh, also too, I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, one of the things that LeBron James also did was um, he gave an option to um, those who graduate from the school, they can get a free ride, college. Oh, tuition. not an option. Everybody yeah. that graduates from his school goes to the University of Ohio yeah. for free. Yeah. And another amazing thing that he did was... Um, Every parent can come to the school while their children are in school to get their GED. So how amazing is that? Like, how how much of that is just being a part of the solution and not the problem, right? Because that that may empower a parent in order to participate in in the things that they need to participate in because it's like you don't have to worry about daycare. And if they have smaller children, those children are still allowed to come to the school with the parents. So, you know, he does a lot of crying and whining, but you got to love LeBron for what he does in the community because it's so many people. He's a crybaby. What do you mean? But it's okay. Michael Jordan was a crybaby. He was definitely a crybaby. You see the meme that lasted like 20 he's years passionate. He's passionate after about, he played. He's the greatest, man. He's passionate about it, you know, about the game, man. Leave the man alone. Man. Tomato, <laughs> tomato. But I love him for all of his community work. Never would knock him for that. And um, always speak highly of him in regards to that. And we got a shout out to a local favorite, Kevin Durant. His community center will be opening soon up in Capitol Heights. So um, Now that's a crybaby right there. Yeah. On the basketball court. He's a crybaby. He is a crybaby. But I think it's the chicken that you guys are eating because you're so <laughs> emotional. You need to all become vegans because you guys, that oh, your man. estrogen level is like at a million. And <laughs> something, something needs to happen. But you need to just come on over to the um, vegetarian squad and get it together. Yeah, I'm thinking about that though. I, I I don't know about the vegan, but I'm thinking about the you know vegetarian. I need to try to incorporate that in my diet. Friday. I, that's going to be hard for me to let chicken go, though. That's a hard transition. Man. Yeah, it's a hard transition. I ain't going to be able to. I got to have I got to have chicken. At least once a week. First step is salad. <laughs> Put even, the chicken in the salad. Even Ooh. cutting your meat consumption by one day a week can make a big impact. Yeah. Because it also meat and dairy production affects mm-hmm. climate change pretty significantly as well because cows release methane. Um, which is a greenhouse gas. So cutting your wow. your meat now, consumption who knew that? one day. Say that again. <laughs> um, cow and, and and chicken farms and all of it, they release a lot of methane, especially cow farms, because um, have a lot of cows in one area and they're doing their business. Um, <laughs> methane. Methane is four <laughs> times more likely <laughs> to. <laughs> <laughs> no, methane <laughs> like gas. <laughs> Um, and yeah, ca- uh, methane uh, is four times the greenhouse gas that carbon dioxide is. Wow, so, that, I, wow. as a, so is it coming uh, out of their poop? Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, it's chemicals yep. in your poop, or just the animals' poop? 
Do I have chemicals in my food? I mean, methane, the, the levels are very low for oh, like one humans. individual right, right. And, and one cow. So, but when we have a lot a of farm. cows together, I mean, you put on the chemicals in your body, farm, of course, it's going to be. Yeah, in they release a lot of methane, which causes global warming. So, wow. even cutting your meat and chicken, pre eating one day can dramatically uh, cut down your greenhouse footprint. So, like, you know how when you're driving behind a dump truck, you roll your windows up? And you smell it? Yep. Just it picture that with a bunch of cows in one little <laughs> area. That's a good mm. way to think about it. Yeah, oh, I don't eat meat, so I'm good. Landfills also produce a lot of methane, so that's another thing about And trash. I think that that's where the, the diaper thing comes from. Probably. Yeah. Oh, you nasty cows. You know what? I hate cows anyway because they just look dirty. Have you ever seen a cow up front? <laughs> they don't take baths. And when I actually visited, like, um... Everybody goes to, what's the place in Virginia where you lie on somebody, you want to buy a timeshare and they give you a free weekend? It's near the Sedona Valley. And uh, when I drove past there, them cows look like they need a bath. I was like, ooh, I would never eat you again. It was just, <laughs> stuff like that is simple for me. I'm the cut off queen. Like, it can take <laughs> one thing for me just to be like, them cows were dirty. Like, I wouldn't even want to put him in my mouth. He was disgusting looking and it was just, Trifling. You know what I found out, um, and not to get too religious, uh, but you know, um, back in biblical times, they said that um, we didn't, they didn't eat like animals and meat. That like, you know, we ate things that came from the earth, and God gave us manna. You know, ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then you know, as time went on, and people started wanting, you know, corruption, and you started people started doing what they wanted to do, and not leaning towards what God wanted wanted for us, you know, then that's how we started to eat and, and um, you know, well, kill animals. You, and If um, you look at it like this, right, the strongest animals don't eat meat. Elephants don't eat meat. They weigh like 1,029 tons, which is why my thighs are so huge and I don't eat meat. Like, I'm cut from the elephant family. Mm -hmm. Deers don't eat meat. And you see how strong deers are. Mm -hmm. Like, the strongest animals don't eat meat. Period. And I'm not here to convince anybody. Y'all die the way you want to die. I'm convinced. But, um, you know, I'm just saying. And, and all I have to say is this. One thing you need to pay attention to is the children. That's all I have to say. If you come from a moderate income, um, a moderate neighborhood or a low income neighborhood, then you already can tell the difference with the children. Like, if you pay attention to how now everyone gets diagnosed with the ADHD, their attention spans are so low, they don't read the same way. They're gaining weight at a, um, you know, boys have breasts, ten year olds have breasts. Where does what's the common what's the commonality in all of that? It's your food. Whether you're white, black, Asian, or indifferent, if you come from a, a poor neighborhood or a moderate neighborhood, you all have the same type of food. It doesn't matter what color you are. So I don't like pulling a race card with the whole thing because I think it's BS. I think the new racism for me is classism. It has nothing to do with your color. If you're poor, you're poor. You're going to get treated the same way across the board. But you have to be very mindful with that. And another thing, like I don't eat meat. My daughter eats meat. When it's, when it's her cycle time, she has the worst cramps. She breaks out more than I break out. Like, she sleeps all day. What's the difference? I don't eat meat. She don't eat meat. You have to pay attention to that. But uh, but, but see, this is what I also learned, too, because I, um, what is it called? The, 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 the MGO? What is it? Um, oh, GMO. GMO. The GMO. I, I was, uh, last year I started to uh, do some research on that and, uh, and everything. But it's just like, Okay, if you go vegan, but they also say that the tofu is not good for you either. No, it's not. I don't like you tofu. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so it's like, what do you, you know, you got to eat something. And they just put up a new wing stop not too far from my house. So, like, I want to eat. I want to eat. <laughs> eat I it. Die the way you want to die. I, but don't say die the way you want to die. But not, I, I do need That's to the eat truth. Healthy. Because at the end of the day, habits. like, we, we're we all going to die. Vegans die every day. So it's not like you're just because you're vegan, it doesn't mean that you're going to die. It's just it's just the quality of life is different. That's what I'm saying. I want to So you got to, one thing that we have to figure out now, which again goes back to the food, but our grandparents, the 35 and older grandparents, lived longer without diseases than the 25 year old and younger grandparents that live with diseases that's true that's just true. pay attention to that so what would be the difference 
the food. It's, it's one commonality in all of that. Like my nana, you know, or like a great grandmother may have lived to 85 and never took medicine. But the new 85 grandmas are in nursing homes. And, you know, people are getting cancer at 30. That's not, that's new. So, again, <sighs> die the way you want to die. And if you want to eat chicken, enjoy it. Hey, Fry the, it, boil it, bake it, do what you want to do. Man, but you just have to be careful about that. called the Big Daddy. And it's, 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 it's awesome, man. <laughs> So it's kind of hard. Like, I've been already exposed to these things, and it's like, I, I, I know I'm getting older, so I, I need to take better care of myself. I got to start eating better. But it's just so hard with just all this stuff that they just promote. And it's like, Set your priorities. Looks, what's what's more so important? Good. Put money in checkers' pockets or not getting diabetes? It's up to you. I mean, it's just I think, that simple. I, I think, I, to me, sometimes <laughs> the I choices think... choices are simple. I think it, 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 it's just about moderation, man. You know what I'm saying? You don't owe, okay. just don't OD on it. You gotta have it every once. Like, uh, you know, I, I noticed um, Gucci Man. He has, he does a diet. Him and his wife, where they, um, they do vegan Monday through Friday, and then he'll have a, either a chicken or a beef. You know what I mean? But Monday through Friday, they don't. They just straight vegan and veggies, fruit. Um, and I love her because she cooks in the house every yeah. day. She cooks yeah. whatever he wants every day, and he doesn't eat out. That's another thing, too. Like, if you are if you already know that you have bad eating habits, just eat in the house. That way you have a little bit more control over what's in it. You still may not know, like, where the chicken comes from or, you know, if it's a clone or whatever because they're now cloning salmon. So, again, just because you're a vegetarian don't make you safe from what's going I try on to get, I try because to get now they don't have of, to report I try to get my I try to get food out of, like, a halal market, um, you know, and... It's it's it's. Uh, I try to eat better, but it's it's kind of expensive though. Like when you get in, like going to Whole Foods and like these these um these grocery stores, um, it's it's kind of it's expensive. It's not you know, even kind of it is expensive. Not eat. true. We're doing a recipe, um, a not a recipe, a meal challenge at the Healthy Helpings on June on September the 29th. So we're going to actually show you guys how you can shop on a budget. Especially if you get food stamps, I mean, you guys automatically get half off your produce when you go to the farmer's markets. If you have food stamps, you don't even pay all for it. So we're going to have all of that information at the Healthy Helpings on September the 29th, which is another free event. Make sure you check out my website, and we'll be able to give it to you because excuses are excuses. It's way But it is it. It's cheaper to eat garbage, man. It, it is. I, you know, yeah, you can, it, there is, you know, I'm, I'm great, and I'm happy about, you know, you know what I'm saying, the, the budget and showing people how to budget. But the truth of the matter is, man, people are in poverty. They eat because they really have no choice at times. And they've been trained that and they've been taught that. Have you, have you, it's, it's cheaper to buy pork products, which is not no good for you, than to go out here and maybe buy, you know what I'm saying, a fish or, uh, um, I don't know, a, a steak or whatever. You know, sometimes families have to eat trash because that's all they can really can really afford. That's not true though. You know what if, I'm saying? Again, because if you get food stamps, you get half off I, your listen, produce I and half off your groceries with your produce plus. I understand that, but what I'm saying is it's still you can still it's it's cheaper to eat garbage though. Like go to the grocery store and see how much pork costs and then you go look and see how much a chicken or a fish. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 been Numbers don't lie. So, yeah, yeah, you can show a person how to budget all day long. You can maybe get more for their buck. But the numbers don't lie. You know what I'm saying? The garbage food is cheaper. So a lot of people and a lot of families are forced to eat those things because they're like, yo, I got, you know, a family. We're and just going to close out with you being a part of the problem because it's not true. I'm so not a part of the problem. We'll talk offline. Bye-bye. <laughs> because it's not true. Okay, How it's it not, not true. true. How is it not true? Racism. I just told you three we ways it's go, not true. I'm not, but I'm not saying that, though. I'm not, what I'm saying to you is if you go to the grocery store and look at the prices of the food, pork and products that, that, that are not good for you are cheaper than, look at fruit and produce. Those stuff, that stuff is expensive. Right, but if you go through your program, that you But I'm not talking about that, though. Then it won't. Okay, you got it. Then you can do it. You're right. Yeah. 
Right. right. I wanted to do that. But you know, some of them are too acidic. Yeah. 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 Ye
Um, what do you guys one think about the picture? Like, do you th people take pictures of celebrities on it? Well, people take pictures of people. Period. If you're feet are ashy, you may end up on Instagram. Like, just <laughs> lotion your feet because you never know. Um, but in this instance, like with her taking a picture of a celebrity again, I don't think that she per se was being malicious. And again, I didn't see the post to see what she said about the picture. But I know Fox and CNN was just a little too much. But what do you guys think about that? I think job shaming in general is terrible. People got to make ends meet and are doing what they can do. So we should be, you know, lifting up all career paths because it doesn't matter if you're a garbage man or a grocery packer or a solar installer, you're doing a job that needs to be done and we should all appreciate that person for doing it and also lift them up for, you know, having a job and making ends meet, doing the thing they got to do to live. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, so I think it's, it's ridiculous that it, it got so big and went so far. Yeah. I mean, I just think it's, um, I think it's terrible too. Like, you know, like you said, I agree with you. Job's got to be done, you know. And he's obviously, he's he's not ashamed of, you know, it, it, and it takes a big, well, a big person to be well confident. Um, you got to be comfortable in your own skin. I mean, he was a, 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 I would say a fairly huge star on the Cosby show. Um, and they had a great run and he also did some other things. I believe he was on CSI and um, another movie. So for him to be comfortable in his own skin and not be ashamed to say, hey, people are gonna see me and wanna, you know, cause the first thing that we think is, oh, what happened to his money or what did he do with his money? Why is he working this low level job when he was a, uh, a Hollywood star? But he, I mean, you know, he's a man and he's doing what he has to do for him and his family. Maybe he, he wanted to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true too. Like. You know, some people, um, I know there was a guy who was, um, I forgot his name, and this, uh, he was an NFL star, and he actually enlisted into the military some years ago, um, and he gave up his, he gave that career up in the NFL to be, you know, he went after his dream, his passion, and a lot of people gave him, like, why would you do that? You have, you know, you're living a dream, and you're giving up with millions to go enlist in the military, and it's just like, yo, that's what he wanted to do, so, you know. Well, I think more importantly, um, in Jeffrey's case, in the interview that he did um, on Good Morning America, he said today he still works, but as you know, the money don't last always. And one of the hugest issues with him going to Trader Joe's instead of just sitting around during the times that he's not working was the point of the Cosby Show no longer being on air. People really need to educate themselves before they start judging people. So when celeb when people have TV shows, you get royalties every time that they're paid after. That's why a lot of celebrities, especially child actors, don't necessarily have to work anymore because they're being paid out royalties. And then you'll still see them and they're still flashy and people are wondering, what are they doing with their money? You get back pay. Just like on this radio show, we pay royalties for music that's played on the show. So with the Cosby show being off air, and apparently he must didn't have like any property or something else going on. He had to pick up a job because in between the times of him working, because he's been on CSI and a cup in a movie and a couple of other things, so he's been acting since. It's just the point of his break, and then with the royalty stopping, he had to pick up something. And he said that he did want to work at Trader Joe's because it offered him flexibility in his hours, so therefore he could still go and interview on um, for other jobs and to get other roles. But it's interesting how people try to turn. Um, make you feel bad or shame you because now he has a deal with uh, Tyler Perry so he'll be doing 10 episodes on um, I think it's the have and have not on own and he got picked up for another job too and I was looking for it and I couldn't find it but someone else ended up hiring him for another job so it just goes to show you that there one are good people out there Two, stop talking about things that you do not know and mind your business, because everybody can be judged for something. Like, and I just think it was just terrible for it to go that far with him when if he was home and not taking care of his family, that would have been an issue too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you gotta pick your poison. Either you wanna see me at Trader Joe's, or you're gonna talk about how I'm a deadbeat because my family can't eat, or we got evicted, or our house been foreclosed because I choose not to work at Trader Joe's. I think this, yeah. that's just the society and the world that we live in is like, you know, with the shaming and the bullying and the, you know what I'm saying, the, um, how, you know, social media is just like, 
it's a it's a hot topic and and um you know i hear uh charlamagne say this nobody um wants to hear the truth when the lies more entertaining so it's like you know that's just the world that we live in and it's, it's just getting worse and we just got to be able to develop some type of thick skin and, and just try to teach each other to uplift each other more and not pull each other down I hope this sparks like a counter type of thing, like a encourage campaign. Just, just go out and encourage a random person. Like, right. thank you for doing your job. Like, right. Like, if I was rich, a billionaire, I, honestly, I'm not lying. I swear, I would still do my exact same job. Cause it's like giving back to the community. So just encourage people. Just like, mm. it's sad that it's happening. But, mm -hmm. yeah. I try to do more for uh, um, the homeless. That that's that's like a big thing for me. Um, you know, when I see when I see those who are in need, like especially the homeless, because I've been there, I've been in that situation before where, I, you know what I'm saying, I lived on the street, I had nowhere to go. So, you know what I'm saying, so like when I do, honestly, when I see, and I don't judge, you know, regardless of what a person does, what, what the help that you give them afterwards, because it's, it's really, it's, a, it's about, I think it's more so about what, what pleases God, you know what I'm saying, not to get too religious on people, but I just think that's just what God would have us to do, you know what I'm saying, just to reach back, give back, and pull the next person through, or, you know, even with a smile, or, um, or just saying good morning, or, you know, being polite, I just think that we need to do more of that. And, you know, there are industries, like solar is a great example, there, it's one of the fastest growing job industries, and yet there aren't enough trained workers to fill the jobs. So that's where, you know, our training program is really helpful and important. But, um, you know, in absence of that, there's jobs that are open looking for people to fill them mm -hmm. and not enough trained people to fill them. So you should never be criticizing someone for not, you know, working because you got to get the job you can get while also being able, exactly as he said, keep your options open to continue to grow. Mm -hmm. You should be doing what you can do right now while working to, you know, get that next job. and. Um, as Dom said, we love what we do because we get to give back to the community mm -hmm. um, and help people gain those skills to fill those jobs that are that are open. Yeah. It's really a job yeah. you could be proud of, though, because you, you like you said, you're giving back, and it's it's just like it, it feel, I know it probably feel, it feels good for you guys it, to be able to do that. Helping someone feel is a thousand more times better than changing someone because like I remember when someone came to the program, they was homeless before. Like prior to the program, they was homeless. They went through our solar program. They got us a stable job, and now they're just, they're they're so successful right now, it's just, it's hard when, like, I don't want to cry every time I think about it. It's just mm -hmm. like, she's out there encouraging other people, like, she's getting people in the program, like, she's just doing the cycle. All it took was one person just to tell her about it, and then she's doing good now, and then she's going to spread that word and tell other people and help it out. So, definitely, like, build people up, don't break them down. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have anything nice to say, you can join my ignoring class and I can just teach you how to ignore people and that way just don't say anything at all. Like, I just think people should mind their business. If it doesn't directly affect you, but, you know, I always mess Martin Luther King's quote up, but I like to make it my own. What does not, what does not affect you directly affects you indirectly. So either be nice about it or just mind your business. But I hate people just judging people just because. Like, if you haven't experienced that person to have an opinion, then don't, what you need an opinion for? It's not that serious. Like, life is too short. And just move on. So, shout out to him on his new jobs. And when we come back, we're not going to do the water thing. We kind of had a heavy show. So, when we come back, we'll just talk about upcoming projects that you guys have. We'll give out the social media information, SolarWorks information again. And then, if you can think of, while we're gone, like, three myths about alternative energy that you think you hear the most. And then we'll close out the show when we go when we come right back. So don't you guys go anywhere else. We get ready to close out with great alternatives. You still have time to check out the website. Even after this, it's greatalternatives.org. What's so funny? <laughs> no, I'm just looking at my phone. Somebody sent me, okay. sent me something crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be right back right after this.
in total, do you got that many? Do you have two like, each? Or three? Kind of like how does solar work? Which is like, you know, produces energy out of the or like, does it create energy? How is it really free? Does the program work? And then, I need to catch up on the breakfast card. Oh man, I love the breakfast card. Right now. So it's like a very first thing to think. I was interested in that. We are back, getting ready to get out of here. You have been tuned in to Consider This Radio only on WEBR Radio Fairfax. I hope you guys have enjoyed the ride. I hope you have been learned something. I hope you have been encouraged and inspired to do something different. And you know that the cow poop is just too much. It's <laughs> too much. I don't know what, what they're doing, but it's, it's just too much. We just learned that today. So shout out to Jackie for that one. <laughs> <laughs> So what are like three, four myths that you guys have um, that people always say about alternative energy and or solar? Yeah, so one of the big ones is uh, just a lot of misinformation about how solar panels work. Um, so we get questions all the time um, asking about, you know, do the panels pull energy from the grid? Will they cause my bill to go up? Um, things like that. Um, or that they, you know, once I have solar panels, I don't need to pay my bill. Um, and so the reality is that the panels produce a fixed amount of energy. So let's say there are 100 watt panels, that means that the maximum they'll produce 100 watts of energy. Um, so what we generally say is it depends on the amount of energy that folks use and the amount of roof space they have on their roof for how much it can reduce their bill. And it does change month to month because in the summer we have a lot more sunshine, so the panels will produce more energy than they do in the winter. Um, so we provide all of our clients with um, an estimate of how much they can save throughout the year to give them those answers and show them that. But in general, um, you know, it depends on how much energy you use or how much you produce for how the panels work. And one of the main ones that I get is through the actual training program, does it really work? And I must say, yes, it does work. Because um, a lot of times people do programs and it's like, oh, this is far-fetched, I can't do it, I want to see in it. It really works. Like I'm a limited example from it. I came from a six week one and then I'm here and I'm an instructor. So if you're in a twelve week one, imagine the information you're gonna get out of it. So like and I know like just being like I know like the ins and outs, like I knew what I wanted to get taught and what we missed. So I included all that in the twelve weeks just to make it better for anyone coming in. So it actually works, uh, it's real and it's not like far fetched. Uh, this is a solo career that you can obtain. It's really easy to do and I just want people to really extremely I cannot say this enough I want you to join because who doesn't want a job yeah and on yeah. job training job training and help the planet oh, well I'm so I'm, I'm in <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get your number and we can you know and I'm a yeah I'm, I'm in I'm so I'm, I'm trying to be a part of this I really am. All right. um, and I'd say a third one is how is it really free 
Um, so we do save Fred Solar at no cost. Um, and the way we make it free is through um, partnerships with different solar companies so we can get discounts on equipment. Um, we have grants from um, the government and we provide different funding models so that we can cover all of the costs and really make it at no cost for free for our clients. So as long as your income qualified, um, you can receive a solar system at no cost. And again, we do work right now exclusively with DC, um, but if you are a DC resident and you want to know more, definitely go to our website. Yeah, and I would say lastly, it's, uh, if, it, if there's like a blackout in the city, do your panels still work? Are they producing? And that will be a no, because since we're still grid tight, if the power goes out and let's say your solar uh, panels are still producing, and then like the electrician comes out to try to redo that, and you still have an actively like system, if they touch the wires, then they're ready to zap. So when the uh, grid goes down, our system will shut down as well. That way they're safe and they don't get injured. So there are different systems, like you want to be completely off grid, that allows you to keep going, but that's a different type of setup. Okay. Can you give everybody um, your social media information and the website so they can, I know I gave it out already, but just one more time. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So our social media is at GridMDD and our website is gridalternatives.org slash midatlantic. And if you want to join the job training program, be sure to email solarworksdc at gridalternatives.org. Yep, and you can actually see if you qualify on the website too again. So just go on to the gridalternatives.org and you'll be able to click myself. I'm actually on the site right now and it shows you what you just need to put in in order to find out if you actually qualify for the program. So the website is very extensive. You can get pretty much all of your questions answered from there. And then if you have questions after checking out the website, then that's when you shoot them the email, right? On yes. the contact yeah. page. <laughs> There's also our phone number on the website, so you can give us a call and see looked around if you have any questions and talk to someone directly. And if you still have any doubts about the training program, we actually have a testimony from our trainees that have been through the program. So uh, hear from them. They uh, post it on our website. So better yet, the trainees, they speak better for me. So. Right. So. All right, guys. So thank you so much for coming out. I actually learned a lot. Um, we definitely want to support your programming. I have people that I'm interested in sending <laughs> over. And um, maybe at one of the uh, events that we have come up, I don't know if you do out, do you do outreach, Patricia? Like, yes, uh, I'm our outreach yeah. coordinator of okay. one of them. So we do tabling events all yeah. the time. Yeah, and our events are free to table at. So right. um, probably for the pumpkin patch. I think that would be good if you guys come out to the pumpkin patch um, that we're doing October 27th. And you can have a table there because that's in the Ward 7 community, the Deanwood right. area. So they definitely, um, and a lot of them are homeowners, and there's not a lot of solar panels over there. So we can um, get you more information about that. Awesome. And the company that I partner with, Washington Parks and People, that's what they do. Um, that's the, they manage the, the farm over there and they also have rainwater to water the farm so it's kind of a great a great collaboration that's great. That's good yeah. or if you want to yeah. come out for a laugh you can always I know this guy's name Cuddy Wesley Extraordinaire he's having a show October 13th in Rockville Maryland and then if you can't make that one you come to uh, On the Rocks in DC Northeast DC on 8th Street or at on October the 20th there's going to be a day show from 3 to 6 so come get a laugh and get a drink and yeah, I'll, I'll definitely go to the one in Deanwood because I live over there. <coughs> oh, okay. Yeah, Our office is right near there, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've seen it on the website. Yeah. So that'd be fun. Um, again, guys, you can check the. We have so many events to close out the year. It's just ridiculous. Um, so make sure you just look at the website, considerthis.org, and you can go to the events and see if it's something that you want to be a participant of. The only two things that I don't have up there is the lunch with Santa, and we're also going to do lights in the farm. So we're gonna we're looking at Home Depot to give us some solar lights. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we're still trying to be eco friendly, working on that donation. But those are the other the two things that are not oh and the free community dinner we will be feeding the homeless the week um before thanksgiving so those three things are not on the website yet but we do have other events that you can participate in for free in the community and do you want to push your stuff again because you kind of have Tourette's today <laughs> i may go to the um i also <laughs> forgot to plug in the um extraordinaire um dmv at uh dmv.com you go to the website and check out the videos and a lot of other things that we got on there but you know like i said october the 13th rockville maryland 
um, my show I do um, every month. I'm really going to do it every other month now because I need more time. I got a lot, a lot more stuff on my hands. But I do a um, a series called Laugh to Keep from Crying, and this one is going to be part three. And I'm going to be doing it at Rockville, Maryland, um, October the 13th. And on October the 20th, I will be doing it there too in D.C. At, on the Rocks. So I'm we put, making the flyers and putting them out there. So come, come enjoy yourself. You know, I'm all about the comedy. This was a serious moment today, you know, and, and like I said, I'm sold. I'm going to get in, I want to get involved, but, you know, I'm, I'm always going to leave with the funny. You know, that's what I'm about. All right, guys, so as usual, thank you for tuning in to Consider This Radio. I need you to do something for someone else outside of yourself this week. Be productive. Be great. We will check you out next Sunday. Um, Siobhan, oh, my God, the womb care. This is going to be a good show. Um, we're going to be talking about womb care, natural products that you can use for your womb. And a lot of people don't know, and I just learned this, that the womb is the center of stress. So Siobhan is going to break that down before I mess it up um, next Sunday. So make sure you tune in for that. I am your girl, Miss Understood, and y'all have officially been considered. Uh-oh, Chief Keith wants to talk. All right. Nice. Close this. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, that would be great. Laughing, that's my thing. I was just dying laughing in the crowd. Mm -hmm. I met one of my uh, favorite comedians. Yeah, last year we had 300 fans. Everybody got a pumpkin. Molly is funny. Dominique. Dominique. No, for the safety. Yeah, exactly. But you can draw on the pumpkin. Because unfortunately, the fire. So, do you see the But the It was nice meeting you. Pleasure meeting you. Oh, yeah. yeah.